Here we are, it's me and you again. Good morning to you. Coffee cheers. Oh wait, this one, let me turn around this way. I will see you in the future. Shout out to Vlad, AKA Rainmaker for the coffee cup. How the hell are ya? Greetings from Hollywood, California. Today is Sunday, I think. I don't have the camera in front of me, so I have no idea what the date is. July 10th, 11th, I don't know. I, I try to keep track of the date in the videos so that I, when I come back and watch these 10 years later, I'll be able to pinpoint what day and everything it was because even the upload date will have today's date, but sometimes I'll actually shoot the video on different days. But So I try to keep a star date in there. Anybody remember star date from Star Trek? Captain, star date, three, six, five, whatever. I love that, star date, July, whatever it is. See, one of the cool things about working from home, which I've done for like 10 out for the last 10 years, 10 hours, 10 years, is you lose track of time. Like I rarely know what day of the week it is. I hardly ever know the date of the month. I, I rarely even know the month, unless I'm looking at a computer that has the date on it, I don't know. Sometimes I, I think it's the wrong year. I almost wrote 2014 on a piece of paperwork I was doing yesterday, and it's two years ago. But when you lose the uh, nine to five schedule, Monday through Friday, you know, you lose track of all time. Because as an employee of a nine to five thing, you're kind of trained to know Monday through Friday, I have no life, then the weekend is like a big deal. And then the holidays are also a big deal because you get Christmas break, you know, get the day off for Thanksgiving. So you kind of romanticize and worship these holidays where you get breaks from work. But when you don't have a job, it's kind of like, not that every day is a holiday, but there's just no schedule. And it's always kind of the weekend. You wake up and go, what do I feel like doing today? Do I want to work? Do I want to go to the beach? Do I want to sit around and watch Netflix? Do I want to shoot YouTube videos? I don't know, it's a good time. I, uh, I used to hate my job, and I guess that's what this video is gonna be about. I was gonna talk about morning cardio, but that's kind of boring. Basically, morning cardio, I've started doing it. I don't even know how it started, but it became a habit, and now if I don't do it, it feels uncomfortable. That's kind of a, the way things work for me. If I don't wanna do something, I just keep doing it until it becomes painful not to do it. So if you don't like going to the gym, just keep going. And, t and at some point you'll make the turn to where you get uncomfortable if you don't go. Like you almost have to go. You can't stay out for too long or you start to feel iffy anyway. But the freedom from working at home, and this isn't some scammy bullshit. I have to just say that because every time I say work from home, make money online, affiliate marketing, any of these words, in my own brain, I hear scam, 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 scammer, con artist, you know, because just like you, I've watched thousands of guys get on YouTube or online or on blogs and talk about these multi-million dollar dreams and point and click profits and push button systems and secret masterminds. And look, man, this is a legitimate, I'm a legitimate person who fell into affiliate marketing by accident made truckfuls of money online right away, and my entire life changed. In fact, it's the only reason why you're seeing this now. Because my life in 2008 was an utter disaster. I was drinking out of control, and I don't mean, I was dangerous when I drank to myself and to others. I was run over by cars, I almost had my leg amputated from that accident, I was arrested many times, I was so depressed. I was crying when I was drunk. I passed out in ditches. Uh, you know, I got in trouble with the law, got in fights. It was just terrible and went on for 20 years. Then I stopped drinking and almost simultaneously with that experience, I started doing online marketing and it blew up. I had tinkered with it for about 10 years, but when I was sober focused, moved to California and decided to really try it, it exploded out from under me and I think Sometimes I think like if, if this hadn't happened and I was working at a nine to five job somewhere still, if like I was in a band and I still hadn't made it and I was having to work at, you know, some like web design shop, I don't know that I would be here. I, I would probably jump off a building or something because I just can't stand that lifestyle. I enjoy the freedom of working from home. And, and even just now when I said it again, there's so many con artists out there that it's almost, I'm embarrassed to even talk about this stuff in a way because I don't want to be that douchebag that like puts on a suit 
and has a chalkboard and he's like, here's how you make your millions online. Uh, there's those guys, they've been doing that for 10, 20 years. I make money by buying ads and sending companies customers. If a, if a, if a company is willing to pay me 50 bucks to sell their watch, I go out and I figure out how to create a customer for 25 bucks. I, that way I spend 25 to get the customer, they pay me 50, I clear $25, I double my money. I do that over and over and over and I, may, I do it as often and as big as possible. That's really it. But the lifestyle that comes with it is the best. And the thing is with me, I never thought I was gonna make truck fulls of money. I just wanted to make 100 bucks a day so that I could free myself from that crazy world that we've built where you're born into a place and you go to this school and learn all these outdated facts from people who aren't very smart. And, and then you're, you're put into categories based on religion, I mean, like race, income, if you're into sports, if you're not into sports, you, know, you get the geeks, the jocks, the black people, the white people, the Mexicans, the Asians, they all, all those cliques kind of form in, in school. It's almost like a training ground for a broken society. And, I, and then you get out, you, if you go to college, that's great. You get into debt, $100,000 in debt. Then you get some job, and then you get married and buy a house and have a kid and go further into debt. And then you just live out your life working nine to five in debt the whole time because we always spend as much money as we have plus a little more, right? And then at the end of it, you look back and you get to retire at 65, 67, and then you have, I don't know what, anywhere from three to 15 years before you're probably gonna wrap it up. So you work 65, 67 years so that you can have 15 years of freedom. When you're kind of older, you know, it's harder to get around and your, your body doesn't work as well. It's kind of a weird thing. And I just did affiliate marketing to get out of it. I just wanted to work from home. I didn't care if it was a hundred bucks a day. That's what I wanted to make. That was my dream. The rest was just icing on the cake. So is it real? Yeah, it's real. Is the freedom real? Yeah, the freedom real. Just look at me. Like I'm not, I don't have a high school degree. I don't have a college degree. I'm not, as, I'm not a very smart dude at all, but I'm obsessive and I have an addictive personality and I'm super creative. So when I find something creative that caught my attention, thank God for this. Because when I stopped drinking, I needed something to fill that hole. You know, drinking for me filled a hole in my soul that was there from some heartache and stuff that happened early in life. And when I stopped drinking, what else, what am I gonna do now? A lot of people start eating. And that's why when people stop drinking and doing drugs, they blow up, they balloon up, because they have to have something to fill that void. So for me, it was affiliate marketing. And I started doing the marketing. I didn't care if I was making $5 a day or $5 million a day. I just liked doing the work. It's very meditative to be lost in the work, the graphic design aspect, the coding aspect the optimization aspect, the statistics, the landing pages, the CTRs, all of this stuff, the profit and loss sheets really became like a meditation for me that saved me from needing to go out and drink. It gave me something to do because when you stop drinking and you're a rock and roll singer and you stop doing all that, your whole social life and identity goes away. That's what happened to me. And so I had to like f f come up with the new identity. And what, what happened, it was the, the creative weirdo computer guy came out and just was like, I'm taking over. Now I'm running the show. Now that your brain works and you're not clogging me with alcohol and sleeping in ditches, you know, we're gonna put something together and then boom, like a light switch, it all just exploded. Within six months of stopping drinking, I had left Oklahoma, the little town I was dying in called Tulsa, I was near death. Sold everything, came to California. Within six months, my whole life had changed. I had made enough money to probably retire if I had wanted to at that point. And I had a, it was like a lightning strike hit me. It was God, it was the universe, it was Allah, it was Buddha, whatever it was just struck me. And I was praying for it. I used to pray when I stopped drinking, like please, God, Buddha, universe, whoever you are, just help me, help me, help me. I was panicked and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And then just like a lightning bolt hit. I actually wrote an article about this experience. It's called The Day God Came Into My Bedroom. And anytime anyone says God, I freak out. So when I say it, don't freak out. What I mean is the representative, whatever the name is for that superpower, that invisible superpower in the world that's out there. We all know it's out there. We fight wars and kill each other over the correct name and all the rules, you're, the correct rules you're supposed to follow. But we're, all, we're actually all talking about the same thing. 
some sort of weird superpower that's out there that kind of makes, that made this whole place science, darkness, I don't know what you call it. But I prayed to that and it struck me with lightning. So the article, I'll link it in the description, it's called The Day God Came Into My Bedroom. And it's about an experience I had in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where I was praying and was hit by some sort of universe lightning. And after that, man, like I said, within six months, my whole life had changed. New city, new tax bracket. I was no longer a broke rock and roll struggling singer. I was this weird, like creative, super successful entrepreneur. And uh, it's just the strangest thing that ever happened. But I love the freedom. I, I started this in 2008. I was trying in like 2005, but it really came together in 2008 and eight late. So that's eight years at this point. Eight years I haven't had a job. That's the best feeling on earth, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm, I'm not trying to sell you a product. I'm just telling you stories from my life. That's all I do here. Hopefully you learn something from them. But the freedom is so good. And it, what, what happens when you pull yourself out of the nine to five matrix, the career matrix, you pull yourself out and you can see how strange and weird and wrong it is. No one on this planet was born to become a Subway sandwich artist. And I say that because I worked that job for four years. I'm not slamming Subway employees at all. I did it, I've been there. But I'm saying it doesn't, no one was born on this earth to become a ditch digger for Larry's Ditch Digging Company. Like we all have such a higher purpose. And when you pull yourself out from the nine to five weird society rules that we've created, that someone created to keep us in check, that's my conspiracy theory. All these rules, all these laws, they were created, religions, everything, created to keep us in check, to keep us from becoming the superpower, freak out human beings that we are. We may be able to fly, no one knows. Well, you know, they say we don't use our whole brain. We have so much potential, but we're stuck in a system that's, whose job is to crush you from the beginning with the realities of life. And, you know, wake up to reality, kid. You need to get a job and go to school and all this bullshit. All these myths that are passed down the line from great grandparents to the, their kids, to their kids, to their kids, to their, and it just keeps going. Once you pull yourself out of that matrix, you look at it and you go, why are all these people doing this? Like, why do you go to a job nine to five every day of the week, other than Saturday, Sunday, you get to live your life. But Monday through Friday, you go to a job that you, that you don't like, with a, job, a boss that you hate and a manager that's clueless and you spend all of your time helping someone else build their dream while your dreams are put to the side because you have bills to pay, right? The problem is <clears throat> most people, I say this from experience because I watched my income go from like $7,000 a month way back in the day when I was working at part-time jobs, dishwashing, then to like 12,000 a year when I was at Subway, then up to like 25,000 a year when I started doing web design, all the way up to 75, 85, 95,000 a year at the end of my web design career. But I was, at every step of that way, I was broke. So it doesn't matter, it didn't matter if I was being paid 7,000 a year or 95,000 a year. Either way, I was spending the money. As soon as it came in, I was spending it. Maybe you can identify with that. So there's really no escape from the rat race with a, with a regular job. The, the escape for me happened when I pulled myself out of the matrix, figured out a way to make a little bit of money in the beginning. All I wanted was a hundred bucks a day and then I would keep my lifestyle in check. And that's been my mantra ever since. Every time it's, my income goes higher and higher, I try to keep my lifestyle in check. That's not to say I didn't make mistakes. I did dumb stuff. I went out and spent you know, hundreds of dollars per belt, $1,000 on a pair of shoes here, $1,000 on a pair of shoes there. Went out and bought an incredibly expensive suit like a maniac for my friend's wedding that was in Oklahoma, outside in the rain. So the shoes, $1,000 shoes, uh, I think it was at least a $1,000 suit. I'm, I'm wearing like two, $3,000 worth of clothes at a wedding that's outside in Oklahoma, in the dirt, in the rain, in the mud. It was disastrous. But I did dumb stuff like that too. I think we all do. It's like when someone wins the lottery, they go out and buy a bunch of dumb shit that they always wanted. 50 go-karts, 12 Lamborghinis, whatever, you, you go through that. But then, then you kind of settle in and you go, wait a minute, why am I not just keeping my lifestyle where it is and stockpiling the cash? Because believe me, if, if you want to, if you, you could make a million dollars a month 
and be broke. People do it all the time. You just All you have to do is go to Las Vegas and try to be a big baller. God forbid you have a drinking or a drug problem and they dose you and keep you playing for like two weeks. That's happened. Guys have lost a hundred million, 65 million at the, at the casinos. They go completely broke from hundred plus million in the bank to negative 50 and then the casinos sue them for more money than they even have left. And it's a sad state of affairs. So yeah, man, I'm enjoying the freedom of not knowing what day it is. Sometimes not what month it is. Sometimes I don't know what year it is. And I recommend you try doing the same. You know, I'm not really a, an affiliate marketing guru type of guy. My, my thing, I like to just share stories about my life because it's so damn crazy what happened to me. I was lost, confused, drunk, abused, sick, black, beat up, had been arrested, lost, locked in rehabs. I mean, there wasn't much hope for me. Yes, my friends at the time, there wasn't a lot of hope that I was even gonna live. And then I exploded like a phoenix from the ashes, man. And I, I, I feel funny saying that, but it's true. Shit went crazy. And so I shared these stories with you. If you get inspired, great. If you wanna try to do stuff online, that's fantastic. I'm not gonna sit here and go, one weird trick to make a million dollars online. Let me step one, you know, and do a chalkboard or something. I'm not, that's not me. I just turn this camera on, tell stories, and maybe something that I say will help you. So that's it. I'm also going to drink tons of coffee. It is uh, Sunday, I believe. Like I said, I don't know. So if it's, if it's Sunday, happy Sunday. If you go to church, fantastic. If you don't, that's great too, man. This is kind of a church right here. So I'm glad you came in. I'm your uh, pastor, your, your preacher, your, your gang leader for the day. And I will see you next time. Take care. And I'll see you in the future.